Uh, got off to a slow start tonight. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. So we got off to a slow start tonight, but I was thrilled to see us find our, our, our rhythm, get back into the game. And then really I thought we played pretty good basketball um, from that point on up to the fourth quarter when, um, you know, it's, it's nice to get some of those guys some minutes, but, you know, with the shortened training camp and, and it's a group of guys who haven't played a lot together. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't very pretty out there in the fourth, but uh, with the minutes played by you know those guys in that first that first three, I thought we I thought we did some really nice things. And it was good to get Marvin out there for a little bit. Um, it was good to get Hassan out there. And now, obviously, we have to work on our our flow and chemistry uh, with those those people out there. Uh, Kyle Guy was really good again tonight. I thought the Aaron was was big time just how he was, you know, competing all over the floor and kind of leading the group. I thought Buddy was very solid again on both ends of the court. So a lot of positives to take away from that. Start with question James James. Hey Luke, how are you? Good, James. Good. Um Kyle seems to be gaining confidence every time we've seen him on the court here in preseason. Is this going to is this a preseason thing or is it something where you can see maybe him stealing a little bit of time in the regular season as things go on. Well, what he's doing is um, he, he's building confidence in, in, uh, in his teammates and his coaches as far as trusting him. And, you know, I think that's why it's great. Um, you know, the NBA has gotten to this place now where you have two ways and you have a G League system. Uh, so maybe someone like Kyle, who physically isn't ready uh, last year, can spend a year really getting a feel for it. And, uh, you know, I, I think our development staff and our G League team did a really nice job of putting him in places. And then he obviously uh, has continued to work and got stronger. Um, and, you know, he's somebody that we trust and his teammates trust him. Um, you know, now as far as the regular season is concerned, if we're fully healthy, there's probably not a lot of minutes every night for him. Uh, but if we're having an off night or guys are out and, and he's somebody that we can throw in there and, and, and count on. Uh, hey, Luke, I just was curious, you know, obviously last season defense was something that you really wanted to focus on and improving as a whole team. Um, and Buddy Hield is one of those individuals that was, that was kind of called out a, uh, quite often for his defense. But it seems to me like this preseason that there's been a renewed focus in him as an individual. What are you seeing with him from a defensive perspective? Yeah, I couldn't be happier with his, his, uh, his defensive alertness, uh, the energy he's been using on that end of the floor um, so far uh, since we, we gotten back together. So, uh, he, he's he's been much more consistent. He's been um, he's been locked into the game planning. So uh, very very happy with with how he's playing right now. Sean Cunningham. Hey Luke, um, was that about the weirdest game winner for that you've experienced? Considering the arena was kind of empty and you had some fan noise come or some you know piped in noise. Just what was your takeaway just from the environment? Well, um, I was again. It's always good to win. There was cardboard cutouts, so we had some fans in there. Um, I was glad that he he went for three, so that we, you know, a two point overtime. I don't know how much more of that basketball towards the end there I could have taken, but um, I was I was I was happy to um, to see Kyle make that. And I think anyone that knows Kyle, even going back to his college days, knows that he. Uh, you know, he, he, he likes the, the, the big moment and, you know, he's hit shots like that in practice as far as game winners, step backs, like hard shots. Um, so it was good, good to see him knock it down. Uh, but I wasn't surprised that he made it at all. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's strange in there. You get crowd noise, but there's not real people and uh, just something that every team is having to get used to. Marshall Harris. Hey, Luke, you talked a little bit before the game about kind of your expectations for uh, Marvin Bagley. What, what did you see specifically in terms of what you liked or didn't like or, or how, how you felt about the way you played tonight? And, and is, it, is that going to be a growing thing or is the men's restriction going to stay for the next game as well? Well, we'll talk. Um, if it goes up, it won't go up much. Um, you know, that's a, those are conversations I have with the medical staff um, as far as what his um, – 
you know, just where they feel he, you know, he, he's safe to play at, you know, he hasn't played basketball now since before, uh, before the training camp started really. Um, so that we just want to make sure that we, we keep him healthy uh, for obvious reasons. And I was just happy he was out there on the court tonight. Uh, you know, a lot of times the offense, we got a little uh, bogged down, but uh you know, he still did some really nice things. He showed, you know, what he's, you know, some of those offensive rebounds and those putbacks. And uh, and once, you know, we get familiar and get him more reps within the the flow of the system, I think obviously it'll just, it'll, it'll get better and better. But it was great to see him out there. It was great to have Hassan out there, uh, you know, changing shots at the rim and, and really kind of, uh, you know, anchoring down the defense in the minutes he played. Jason Jones? Okay. Hey, Luke. Hey. Just uh, following up on Hassan, just what are the biggest things that change for you defensively when he's down there and, you know, intimidating guys in the paint and doing what he does with the, uh, with the block shots? Yeah, um, well, he, he he's tough to make shots over. He, he just is. He's, he's huge and he has a good feel. He's got good timing, a good understanding. Um you know, of, of how to protect the rim and, and make defenses take the type of shots we want them to take. Uh, and even if you get a clean look over him, it's, you know, he's still in the back of your head. So um, I thought he did, he did a really nice job out there. And, uh, you know, we, there, there's more complex defensive schemes we can get to when we actually have, you know, some time as far as putting him in a, in a deep drop and, and teaching the guards about how that changes their coverage and, and kind of funneling everything to him. Um, but for not right now, uh, you know, it's still it's still pretty much the ba basic package that we're working with. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's you know, the first half, I thought outside that first stretch, our defense was pretty darn good as far as competing, being locked in together, moving, helping each other. Um, not fouling, and, and then the second half, it kind of started to slip away a little bit. Just a few more, Jason Anderson. Hey, Luke, real quickly on Hassan, um, any, before I ask you a, a different question, if that's okay, anything about his neck? It looked like he had hurt himself a little bit. Yeah, I, I haven't got an update from the trainer. He was smiling and laughing after the game, so I'm assuming he's, he's fine. Um, but he did, you know, he got, he got his head hit on that, that collision under the rim there. Okay. And I, you know, I wanted to ask you about the three point shooting. You guys ended up, uh, uh, well, I guess it's 26 tonight. Um, is that, so I don't know. I know that's been kind of a focus these last few games with, with you guys attempting close to 50 in the first two. What, what would you think about the threes you were getting? 26. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong column. You ended up with 42, which yeah. is what I was thinking at first. So clearly it looks like we're going to see some pretty big numbers out of you guys in terms of those three point attempts, right? Yeah. Well, and, and, and Jason, we had, you know, we've been, we had 22, 23 turnovers tonight, you know, so if we can get that number down as we had 10 turnovers in the first quarter. We had one in the second, right? So if we can get that number down to where we want it, you know, that's going to be an extra, you know, seven, eight shots, whether they're twos or threes, I don't know, but, uh, those numbers will be even higher. Um, and again, it's not about shooting 42, 45, 50 of them. It's about taking good ones and continuing to build and understand what good three pointers are to us. Um, and again, tonight we had some that I was very pleased with, and we had some that we'll show on, on an edit uh, as far as the type of threes we don't want to take. Matt George. Luke, speaking to those turnovers in the first five or so minutes, Rashawn Holmes started the game with, uh, I think, three or four turnovers. It looked like the emphasis was trying to run the ball through him uh, in the high post and around the top of the key. Was that just a focus for tonight to work on? Is that something you envision doing more with Rashawn and Bagley is potentially sharing the floor together? Yeah, uh, it's something we've been working on through training camp is, you know, we're looking to get out fast and then, you know, get the ball moving side to side if we don't have anything. Um, you know, he had some uncharacteristic turnovers tonight, but uh, I think part of it, too, was, you know, that the flow to start the game was just a little different. Uh, our spacing was a little different. Uh, some of the stuff we've been naturally getting into, we just haven't had uh, – the players uh, that started tonight on the court together, you know, Mar Marvin's only day of practice was Monday and Monday was pretty much a, 
uh, shots and recovery day for uh, the starters. So, you know, we had Marvin doing that with the, you know, some of the second group and uh, some other guys in four on four, but uh, just needs time and reps and it'll continue to get, uh, you know, continue to clean itself up. All right, last one, Tony Hart. Yeah, Coach, uh, getting back to a uh, Kyle Guy, um, it says a lot about the, the G League. It looked like, you know, he's definitely been working on his game in the offseason. But can you comment, you know, on, you know, his time, you know, developing in the G League and, you know, getting the opportunity to shine when the, when the time is to shine, time to shine? Well, that, you know, you got to give him personal credit for that. Um, you know, I give our G League and our development staff credit for working with him. Um, but as far as being ready for the moment, that I think that is who Kyle Guy is. Um, you know, it's, it seems that, you know, that's who he was in college. I don't know his high school career, but he, he likes the moment. And he's a tough player. He's a smart player. Um, his teammates love him. And, uh, you know, he was it's, – it's great to see him uh, these last two games kind of – start to play with that confidence and uh and and aggressiveness that he'll need to to play with to to succeed at this level